Alexa, set the crock pot to high for four hours. Four hours high power. Alexa, when will the food be ready? Crock pot will finish cooking at 6.30 p.m. Alexa, what is the setting on the crock pot? Crock pot setting is low. Alexa, turn off the crock pot. Okay. Hi, I'm Mary Rogers, and this is the Cuisinart 4-in-1 Multi Cooker. It's a slow cooker, but it can do so much more than just slow cooking. So let's look at the unit. This is a lid. It's tempered glass with a nice stainless um, handle. I'll put that down there. This is your roasting rack, which comes with the unit. Put that over there. This is your movable cooking pot. It's non-stick. It's great too because I'm going to show you in a little bit how to make a recipe where we're going to brown and saute. And that's really important um, to be able to do in your slow cooker because it also eliminates all the steps of cooking on top of the stove and then putting the ingredients in the cooker. So this product you can actually cook right inside the cooker. You can brown and saute and you can do you know, a really great job at developing flavor so your dishes come out really tasty. So let's look at the front. The um, body of the unit is um, made out of um, brushed stainless steel. It has two cast handles on the side, which make it easy to move it around if you need to move around your kitchen. And in the front, this is your um, touchpad panel. Basically, you'll notice there's four main features on the top. This is slow cook. So you press slow cook, and you can adjust the temperature by pressing plus. And across the bottom, you're going to see that it goes from high, low, to simmer, to warm. Okay. And then also, the next item is roast. So you can roast in the temperature. It happens to be on 350, but it goes all the way um, from 250 to 450. And you just do pick your temperature by pressing the plus or minus button. The next is brown saute. And the same thing, you just pick your temperature by pressing the button. And last item is steam. This is where um, you're going to actually use this rack. You're going to put it inside. And one of the things I like to do with it is I like to steam artichokes because it's like really easy and simple to do. And you can get a lot of artichokes in there at once. So that's your function for steam. And then down here is your start stop button, which engages your um, you know, cooking function. And the other thing I just want to show you too, you can also um, you can also choose how much time you want to put the slow cooker on for, and it goes up to 24 hours. And then what'll happen is if you use the timer, it'll go directly into a keep warm mode. So for instance, if you cook your food and it needs to be cooked for like six hours and you're away for the day working, um, it'll go to keep warm. So whenever you get home, it's ready for you and you can have a family meal with very little effort. So those are the main features and functions of the product. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put it on brown saute and I believe 400. I'm going to hit start. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start preparing um, the ingredients for the lemon rosemary chicken that I'm going to show you how to make today. It's really simple and easy. And I like it because it's very flavorful also. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our flour. We're just going to put it in this um, larger bowl here. We're going to put all of our pepper and about half of our salt to season the flour. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm just going to mix this up with my tongs to incorporate all the seasoning. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start dredging the, the chicken. Sorry. And you just do that. These happen to be thighs. I like to use thighs because they're nice and flavorful. Um, you know, they are also, an, an, you know, more inexpensive than um, some other cuts. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the dredged ones in here while our unit is heating up. So I'm just keep going. I'm going to do about, um, about six thighs at one time. 
that's a, a good amount. Um, and the nice thing about the dredging is it's going to get a nice crit, help you get a nice brown on it. And then the other thing that's great too is later on when you add your liquor, liquid ingredients, um, what'll happen is you'll actually the the flour actually thicken, um, and you'll get a nice sauce, a finished sauce in your slow cooker. I'm just going to do two more. Okay. Now what we're going to do is put these aside for just a second. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to just move this over here. And what I'm going to do is add the olive oil around the pot. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start adding the chicken. And I like to do skin side down first. You just put the, nestle them all together. Don't get them too tight because you want them to, you know, brown and saute. You don't want them... If you get it too tight and there's a lot of moisture, you'll end up um, not browning them as nicely. You'll end up having more of a um, poachy kind of finish on it. So let's just put those in and let it cook for about, I don't know, five or six minutes. And then we're going to come back and we're going to check on them. So let's check on our chicken and see if the first side is brown. I'm going to put that this down here. Oh, it looks gorgeous. So what we're going to do is going to flip all of our thighs over, like so. And I'm just going to show you one. It's like really nice and brown. looks gorgeous. So flip them over. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cook it on that side, and then we're going to come back and reserve it. So let's... um. Check on our chicken. And it's browned on both sides, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually reserve it at this point. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the next step in our recipe, which is really simple and easy. And that is we're going to add all of the onions. This is going to add a great flavor. To your um, chicken recipe and the garlic and then what we're going to do is we're going to saute this um, I'm going to turn the temperature down to I believe 325 325 and what we're going to do is let me just mix this up really well and break up the onions and what we're going to do is let it saute for a few minutes and come back. So let's check on our sauteed onions and garlic. One thing I want to mention is earlier I said that we should be sauteing the onions and garlic on 325 and I checked the recipe and it's actually 375. So you can see how um, nicely uh, reduced those are. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add the rest of the salt, the rosemary sprigs, I love to cook with rosemary, it smells so nice. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add the lemon juice. And what's gonna happen with this lemon juice is that it's gonna help um, deglaze the cooking pot. You can see how it's starting to turn brown. That's actually gonna do a really nice job lifting all of the, um, you know, the flavors that you've developed off the bottom of the pan, and that's going to help make the dish so much more flavorful. So next what we're going to do is we're going to add the little bit of chicken broth. And, oh, that smells really good. Um, this is the lemon zest. Let's add that. I love this recipe because it's so flavorful. I love the combination of lemon and rosemary. So the last couple of things that we're going to do is we're going to like nest our chicken thighs directly on top of the um, onion mixture and all of the rest of our ingredients, just like so. And then what we're going to do, the last step, is to add our lemon slices. Just add them right on top of the chicken like so. 
And now what we're going to do is we're going to um, automatically switch. You can do this. You don't have to turn the unit off. We're going to automatically switch to slow cook just by pressing the slow cook button. And it automatically went on low. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set the time for six hours. And we're just going to let it continue cooking. We're going to come back. I'm going to show you how to plate it up. So let's check on our lemon rosemary chicken. It's all finished. We're going to plate it up now. And what I did here was we have um, some rice. It's a good thing to put your chicken over. Let's just bring the bowl to the chicken. And you look how tender and juicy it looks. Just put it right on top. I'm going to add a little lemon. The lemon like totally disintegrates. Add some of the, see how thick the gravy got from adding the, um, dredging the chicken in the flour. Just do another one. Make sure you get some of the onions and the gravy. Now what we're going to do is going to finish it off with a few um, little sprigs of rosemary on the top so you know what's in it. The great thing about Cuisinart multi-cooker, the four-in-one multi-cooker, is that you can make beautiful, tasty meals, quick and easy. While you're away from the home, it's cooking. You come back and you have a beautiful meal for you and your family. This is the Cuisinart three-in-one multi-cooker. This unit happens to be four quarts. It's a nice, generous size. The great thing about this product is that you can brown saute and then slow cook in it also. So you can still develop that really great flavor when you're browning meats and then actually slow cooking. So you can um, use some, you know, a little bit tougher pieces of meat and this will allow you to brown it, get a lot of flavor out of the meat and then um, cook it at a really low temperature for a long period of time and it'll be um, nice and tender and very flavorful. The other thing with this product is you can also steam in it. So you can steam artichokes. You can actually do like a seafood um, boil, which is really nice. A lot of people I know also use it to make oatmeal. So when they get up in the morning, they have a nice big warm batch of oatmeal ready so that they don't have to rush around in the morning and get their kids ready for school or even get themselves ready um, to get to work. Or on the weekend, if they have company, it's a great way to make a beautiful batch of oatmeal um, to have when you wake up in the morning. So let me show you what else um, you can do to program this unit. Uh, the one thing about it that I really like is it can do what we call combination cooking. So you can basically switch between cooking modes. So if you're brown sauteing and then you want to slow cook, you just press the button and it automatically switches. You don't have to um, turn it off and turn it back on. It has a 24-hour timer, so you can cook for up to 24 hours. And then after the time elapses, it goes on a keep warm feature. So if you're preparing a meal in your slow cooker that you want to have ready when you get home from work during the week, if you're not home on time, it's not a problem. It, it kicks on to keep warm and it'll keep your meal ready for when you get home. The other thing is that over here, you'll notice there's a temperature and I'm going to show you um, how, to, how to use it in a few minutes. But what happens here is that there's four, um, four settings. You have low, high, um, warm, which will go on automatically, and then simmer. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how quick and easy it is to make a rustic tomato soup, which you can have for um, a dinner party if you want, or you can actually um, cook it and have it ready for during the week when you get home. So let's look at the uh, rest of the pieces. This is your removable um, cooking pot. You just pick that up and slide it down. This is your glass lid. It's rimmed in stainless steel, has a nice handle on the top. And then this is um, your cooking rack. And this is great where I mentioned you can do like steamed artichokes. So there's two levels. This is the higher level and you turn it over and that's the lower level. So depending on what you're cooking or if you're gonna put ramekins in there and maybe cook a little bit of custard, that's important to use. So why don't we get started with that tomato soup? I'm gonna remove the lid. And the first thing I'm going to do is add just a little bit of olive oil, some garlic, because here it start to sizzle, carrots, 
And then um, the rest of our ingredients that make our mirepoix, which helps develop really great flavor. And that's your onion and your celery. And the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add just right now a pinch of pepper to get it going and then a pinch of salt. So what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna um, stir this around just a little bit. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna let it cook for a few minutes and um, we're gonna come back and check on it. But something I forgot to mention to you is obviously I started cooking in the pot right away. What I did was so we wouldn't have to wait was I had it set on um, brown saute and I put it on 350. And so we wouldn't have to wait for it to heat up while we're getting cooking. And the other thing I want to mention about the temperature is that it goes from 150 all the way up to 400. So if you're browning any kind of meat, you're going to get a nice, really consistent temperature on that. So like I mentioned, we're going to let that sit for a few minutes, about six to eight minutes. We're going to come back and check on it and make sure it's all nice and translucent and it's starting to cook. So let's check on our vegetables. They're nice and translucent, and you can see they're starting to get a little color on them. And they're nice and cooked, so we're gonna get a nice flavor to the base of our soup. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the rest of the ingredients. And that is going to be, um, these are sun-dried tomatoes. These happen to have been in, in a little bit of the um, oil, so you know. The next item is um, basil, so we're just gonna Put the basil in and marjoram. The last ingredient here is going to be some baking soda. And then our two main ingredients are the fresh tomatoes. And lastly, vegetable stock. And what we're going to do now is we're going to put the lid, I'm going to actually give it a little stir first, stir the ingredients around. You can see them. And like I mentioned, this is rustic tomato soup, so it's nice and chunky tomatoes. Put the lid on. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set it by, I mentioned earlier that it has combination cooking. We're just going to press slow cooker, sorry, slow cook. And you'll notice it automatically, because it has combination cooking, goes from one setting to the next. And you'll see the default here was low. I'm going to just show you the other settings. It's high, warm, and simmer. And then we're just going to go back to low because we're going to let this cook for four hours. And then here's your timer. It goes from zero all the way up to 24 hours. And today what we're going to do is we're just going to press it until it gets up to four. So what's going to happen is we're going to let it cook for four hours. I'm going to come back and check on our tomato soup. So here's our tomato soup. You'll notice it's not chunky anymore. It's really smooth because I actually blended it. You don't have to do that. I prefer my soups chunky, so I'd probably leave it the way the ingredients went in. Having a slow cooker at home is really convenient. It does the cooking where you're off doing something else. Maybe you're at the soccer game or maybe you're entertaining friends doing something else and the slow cooker's cooking for you. Remember, it's a great thing to have in your kitchen. It cooks the food while you're away doing something else.